today I'm gonna challenge you to a creative duo. Yeah, that's right. So look, this is a photo that I took a few years ago during a super vibrant sunrise in Indonesia. It's Mount Bromo and Mount Semeru, two active volcanoes. Looks super cool, right? But this is the same photo turned into a video and I'm gonna show you how you can do this yourself in Premiere Pro, Final Cut Pro or DaVinci Resolve. It doesn't matter and it's super easy. Ish. Okay, so I have a ton of old photos just sitting there on hard drives. You probably know how it is if you also take a lot of photos and I don't know, I think it's so sad that all those photos are just sitting there. So lately I've been trying to find new ways to turn old photos into something new. Animated photos, almost videos. I've been trying out different techniques and some work, some don't. Some are very difficult, you know, like special effects and things like that. But the techniques that I want to show you today are relatively easy and super fun. And the thing is, once you know how it works, you can use this technique, this workflow to unleash your creativity because it opens up so many possibilities and I'm sure that a lot of you are capable of creating something really cool. You can use any photo you want and the basic idea is to add video elements to your photo. I'm gonna show you two techniques today and you can do this in Premiere Pro, Final Cut Pro or DaVinci Resolve, no problem. I'm gonna be using DaVinci Resolve as usual. Okay, so the first technique is dropping a video overlay on your photo. An overlay is a video clip that usually has a black background and you can remove that black background by changing the blending mode of the video clip. You can do the same in Photoshop by the way with photo overlays. Now, where do you find video overlays? Well, there are a few options. First of all, you can just Google it. If you're looking for mist or smoke, for example, just Google free smoke video overlay or free mist overlay. And another option is stock footage or visual asset websites where you can subscribe or buy these overlays. You'll have to pay, but of course, it'll be easier to find what you're looking for. But if it's your first time trying this out, then just Google it and I'm 100% sure that you'll find an overlay that's free. And then once you've found the overlay that you want, could be smoke, could be mist, could be light leaks or rain, like I said, you can get super creative. But once you've found an overlay, first you drop your photo in a video editor on the timeline and then you drop the overlay video clip on top of the photo and you change the blending mode of the video clip to screen. And that's it, super simple. Now, depending on what you want to achieve, the next step might get a bit more difficult. For example, the, the volcanoes that I showed you. The smoke coming out of that volcano is not covering the entire photo and here it goes behind this mountain. So in this case, I cut the shape of that mountain out of the smoke video clip so that it looks like the smoke goes behind the mountain. It's not difficult, just look for some tutorials for the editing program that you're using. But the thing is, it can get a bit tedious and time consuming to make a nice cutout, you know? In DaVinci Resolve, it's called Windows, by the way, in the color tab. I don't know what it's called in Premiere Pro or Final Cut, but it's a basic feature and you should be able to find it right away. And I also used the same technique to make it look like the smoke is coming out of the volcano here. So I basically shaped the clipping mask to make it look like the smoke is coming out of the volcano. And then here, for example, it's a hard edge where the rim of the volcano is, but here it's a soft edge. So you can soften the edges of the clipping mask. But, you know, it all depends on what you're trying to achieve. You'll have to play around with it. Okay, so that was the first technique and it's also the simplest one. The second technique is a bit more tricky to do. It's similar, but it's trickier. So what you have to do is look for video elements that are already cut out. So video elements without a background, basically like a PNG with a transparent background, but then a video like these explosions for example and how do you know if the element the video is already cut out without a background well it usually says that the video clip includes an alpha channel now it's actually super simple because all you need to do is drop the video clip on top of your photo resize it and 
it works. But the tricky part is to make it look realistic, of course. First of all, the perspective of the video clip has to match the perspective of your photo, and you can tweak it a little bit, but not that much. And then there's also the light, the direction of the light. If in your photo the light comes from the left, then in your video clip the light should also come from the left. And the colors also have to match. So you'll probably have to do a lot more work to make it look right. You know, that volcano eruption took me hours and hours to get right. This is what the original video file looked like, the explosion, dark and black. But the photo was taken at sunrise and the volcano is in the distance, so it's a bit hazy. So I had to lift the shadows, I had to make the colors warmer, I added more yellow and orange on the left side because that's where the sun was coming from. And on the shadow side of the smoke I added more blue to make it more shadowy. So it's very time consuming to first of all find the right video clip because you know, you want one that already matches when it comes to perspective and light. But then also, depending on the whole scene, you need to match the colors. And you know, you can tweak everything a little bit to make it look like it's one scene. It has to look believable. And then the cherry on top, of course, is sound effects. And that's the easy part. I added some volcano rumbling and some explosions. Um, Maybe I'll give you a few more tips to make it easier if you want to try this out for the first time. So, first tip, resize your photo. Because you'll be working with video elements that are either 4K or 1080. So there's no need for your photo to be 8000 pixels wide. It'll just slow down the editing process and, you know, make it more frustrating. Usually I even compress the photo a little bit because it doesn't have to be the highest quality. And the second tip is, always remember that once you've added all your video elements, you can still edit your base photo. Because sometimes it's easier to edit your base photo instead of the video elements, if you want to tweak some colors or perspective for example. It's easier to do that in a photo than in a video element. And it doesn't matter if you've already added all your video elements because they're just layered on top, you know? And then finally, before you start, think about what you want to create. And if it's even possible, because let's say you want to make smoke visible through trees and branches. Well, you have to remember that you're gonna have to make some kind of clipping mask of all those branches and trees. And a clipping mask is easier when it's a simple shape. You know what I mean? So think about your skill level and yeah, pick something that's doable. Okay, and that's it. So go get your hard drive with old photos and turn them into videos. I'd love to see what you come up with. So if you create something, put it on Instagram, tag me so I can see it. I'm really curious. Okay, thank you so much for watching guys. Uh, subscribe to the like button and see you in the next one. <laughs>